Is anybody outside? Y'all come on inside. We're going to get ready to start tonight. I have been excited for this for tonight. Um, this is so. I just love Christmas. <laughs> We're just going to put it that way. You know what I mean? Like it's just that time. And I love the music of Christmas. And uh, the worship team has been practicing and doing phenomenal. And I'm just excited tonight for the presence of God. I do want to recognize one person tonight that is on the worship team that's not up here, that is here tonight, Mr. Danny. Y'all give him a hand clap. <laughs> Mr. Danny has been, for those of you that, that maybe this is your first time being with Connect, but Mr. Danny has been with us from the very beginning. Him and Kirk were our original <laughs> worship team. Uh, and he had some surgery done, heart surgery. And this is really his first outing back to church. And we are so glad. Yes. Walked in. I just, you, that just, that just made my day right there. Like that was just a miracle answered right there. Like he walked in by himself. He had his cane, but glory to God, you're here. And he brought, I saw it. He going to, he going to do a little tapping while during worship. And uh, absolutely love it. So if you guys would tonight, if y'all would just go ahead and stand with us tonight. And we're going to pray and we're going to jump right into worship. So you guys pray with me tonight. Father, we just come before you tonight. Father, we honor you. We glorify you. We magnify you. Lord, let our lives reflect you. Father, let us be a mirror of you and who you are to reflect your goodness upon everyone else. Father, let tonight be a night that glorifies you, Jesus, that you gave up your place in heaven to come and make a way for us when you didn't have to. Father, you're truly amazing, and we thank you, and we glorify you, and we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And before we get started, the kids are just fine. You hear me? Like, if, if you're irritated by the kids making noise, I'm sorry, but I'm okay with it. Because, you know, Jesus said, let the little kids come. And so, we're just fine with it, so we love them. Just so y'all know, that's for the parents of the kids, you know what I mean? Like, you've been there, done that, right? Amen. So y'all are fine. I'm going to turn this over to you guys. Of his love and wonders of his love and wonders of his love. 
Hallelujah is all of what you live for. It's all of your praises. It's all of what you're thankful for. So as you sing hallelujah, open yourself up. He is the king, and we are here to worship him tonight. Oh, come on, my soul. 
Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the
praise is yours. You're the one we bow before. Reigning over us as we lift you up. You will reign forevermore. God's good, y'all. So we're going to take communion tonight. So if you would, go ahead and get your cup. If you did not get one, please raise your hands and we'll have one of the ushers gets you one. Is there anybody that needs one tonight? We have one here. Over here. If you're at home watching us, go ahead and grab something for communion tonight. All the way around. There we go. Train them up right, right? Come on now. Train them up in the way they should go. Love it. Anybody else need one tonight? Everybody else have one? So, if you're not familiar with these, just there's two tabs on it. The first one's going to let you get the bread off. So, if you go ahead and pull that one. You know, we did a, we did a sermon or a message um, a couple months ago about communion. And I'd encourage you to go, to go watch that. I really feel like it brings out some powerful stuff. You know, communion is something that we don't take lightly. But it is something that for us at Connect Church, we have, I guess, what you'll call open communion. Uh, different churches have different rules, I guess. I don't know. For me, you know, when I read the Word of God and I see that Jesus, when He gave the communion to the disciples, there was one standing next to him that betrayed him and that was on the way to betray him whose heart had already turned from him and Jesus passed him the cup. Come on. That's how good of a God. Communion is about, you know, the Bible says that when we do this, we do it in remembrance of him. And I know this is something that, you know, during, during Easter time, that we do this, but you know, right now is probably one of the best times to remember Jesus because he gave up something in heaven for us. And he came at Christmas time, what we call Christmas time, as a baby to live a life sinless, to show us and to make a way. So take the bread and Father, we just thank you tonight. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. And Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing what you did. For giving up a place and coming down here to give us a way. Thank you for being born on this earth and walking the life you did and showing us how to live. And thank you for dying on that cross, descending into hell and taking the keys back and raising out of that grave. So we honor you tonight and we remember what you did take and eat. You know, I think in these times we've lost just a little bit of what the blood actually means. You know, there's power in that blood. There's power, you know, <laughs> the old songs I absolutely love. You know, I grew up in Methodist church with the Heavenly Highways hymnal, you know. And just 
thinking about the blood of Jesus, that this is what washes us white as snow. This is what takes the sin away. It doesn't, you know, in the Old Testament, the the blood of the goats and the bulls and the, the doves, they just covered sin. They couldn't wipe it away. Just simply covered it. But when Jesus came and his blood was shed, he wiped it away. So thankful for that. Father, we thank you. Jesus, I thank you for your blood that you shed. Thank you. Jesus, I hate the way that it had to be shed, but thank you for shedding it. Thank you for every drop that came from your body. And we remember you and what you did. And tonight we remember how you came. How you came to this earth. And the purpose you had in that. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Take and drink. stars are brightly shining it is a night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the earth in sin and ever pining till he appeared
sitting down here and we were worshiping and I was I was just thinking about this next year and God was like um, this year's not over yet <laughs> because I was thinking about I'll just be honest I was thinking about miracle signs and wonders and the things that we've been believing for this year and God said, it, it's not over yet. Like, like we, we still got time. So if you would today, if you have a prayer need in your life and you need a miracle from God, would you just raise your hand? Amen. Come on. You know why I say that? Not because I, you know, I know you need a miracle. <laughs> I say that because we, we serve a miracle working God. Yes. And so if, if, just keep your hands raised if you would, if you raise your hands. 
And so everybody else that's around that doesn't have your hands raised, just stretch your hands toward these people. Because 2021 ain't over yet. Father, I just thank you tonight. I thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders in these people's lives. Lord, it's not over yet. We don't have to look to the new year, Father. We still have time. And God, we step out in faith today, Father. For without faith, we can't please you, and we want to please you, Father. By faith, Father, we, we walk and we live. And Father, we step out tonight in faith. Father, with every hand raised, they say, I'm, I'm leaning on you, God. Father, you see the miracles they need. You see what they have in their life, Father, that needs to, the, the miracle directly from heaven. So, Father, right now, right now, Father, we call down the miracles from heaven. In the name of Jesus, Father, we loose your miracles from heaven, Father, upon each and every hand that is raised, each and every life that needs changed, each and every person that needs you. Father, we step out in faith as you asked us to do, Father. So here's what I want you to do. If, if you need healing in your body, I just want you to just, if you can, just either just touch your touch the part that you need healing in or just, just you know, touch your shoulder or your head or whatever you need right now. Mm. Father, your word says that if we lay hands on the sick that they will recover, Father. You didn't say maybe, Father. You said they would recover. And Father, tonight hands are being laid on themselves, Father. So we call those miracles right now from heaven because you are a miracle-working God. We are here to worship you, Father. We are here to give all glory and honor to you, God. Father, let everybody in this place be healed now in the name of Jesus. Let every headache leave. Let every migraine leave. Let every heart be healed. Let every symptom leave. Let every lesion be healed in the name of Jesus. devil we bind you in the name of Jesus you can't have them you can't take their miracle you can't take away from them what God has given to them you're not that powerful so we tell you to leave these situations take your disease and sickness that you put in and leave in the name of Jesus and father we thank you for healing power Lord I thank you for for miracle signs and wonders Lord I thank you for special faith in the people right now special healing father right now you said to desire the gifts of the spirit and father right now we desire those gifts the gifts of healings father the gifts of faith father we step out on your word because you said that you're not a man that you should lie you said that you would do what your word said that you would back it up father it's not on us it's on you god because we're stepping out in faith, Father. We're looking to you. Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lift your voices just thanking. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Call out whatever it is you're believing for. Thank you for it. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that that dystonia is healed out of my sister, Father. That I stand in faith for her, God. That her heart is healed, God. Oh, Father. You are a miracle-working God, and it's not over yet, Father. Because we call on you tonight. Hallelujah.
week, will you sing that? Bible says to fight the good fight of faith. Come on, this is how we fight our battles. This is how we fought through 2020 and 2021. This is how we fought for miracles, signs, and wonders. This is how we believe. It says that, that those that endure to the end, come on, those that keep fighting, those that don't give up, those that don't stop are the ones that are going to win. He said that if you would just continue on, just keep in my word, just keep praying, keep believing, keep pushing. So I encourage you tonight, don't stop. Don't give up. Don't give in. Because the God we serve is a big God. You know, this is the time of year that we just celebrate Jesus. You know, Jesus is the reason for the season. Come on, y'all. And I can't think of a better way to honor him than to be believing for miracle signs and wonders. To be believing for what he brought when he came. To be believing for what he gave when he crawled on that cross. guys be seated you know we look at the life of Jesus and we look at what he did and how he came and just just the fact that he came into this world as a miracle The fact that he came into this world through a virgin. And I was reading, I was reading through scripture, thank you. I was reading through the scripture today and I had on my heart already what I wanted. And God, you know, I always, when I I go through scripture, I'm going to take a lot of time tonight. But when I go through scripture, I, I, I look for things that I can relate to. I don't know about y'all, but like I, I, wanna, I want it relatable to my life, to who I am. And you know, I was looking back, and in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, this is the Old Testament. This is something you need to realize. Isaiah lived 
700 years before Jesus came. 700 years before Jesus. Isaiah said this, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. As you read through the entire Old Testament, as you look at everything in them, everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus. And then you have those scriptures that talk about specifically the prophecies of Jesus. And the things that they said would happen just like this, and it happened just the way that Isaiah said it would. So turn with me if you have your Bibles. I just want to read Luke chapter 2 today. As we honor Jesus and his coming, as we look at that, I want to read that. And then at the end of this, there's something I want to show you. Because I think there's something, because, you know, we read through the life of Jesus and how he came and what happened. And I just, I just you know, the most wonderful story that there is. They're okay. Do not, they're, don't quiet them. They're fine. They're all right. They're preaching with me. We're good. Come on, I like those amens. So if y'all would, let's, let's read Luke chapter 2. It says, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cyrenus, or something like that, forgive me, was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own towns to register. Now, something else in the Old Testament, I didn't grab all the scriptures because like, like they all connect, you know what I mean? But you guys go and look because there's, there's Isaiah, and I believe it's chapter 9, that talks about Bethlehem and talks about how out of Bethlehem will come the Savior, out of the town of David, which was Bethlehem, because, because this is the lineage. Joseph was the lineage of David and, and and the city of David was Bethlehem. So so during this census time, during this time where they had to count everybody, pay their taxes, Lord have mercy. But do you realize that God used the census of paying taxes to happen the birth and to fulfill the prophecies that happened? I'm not saying I like taxes, don't get me wrong. <laughs> So, verse 4, it says this. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to him to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Verse 13, Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared, with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests when the angels when the angels had left them and gone into heaven the shepherds said to one another let's go to Bethlehem 
and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. Verse 16, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, the baby who was laying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Verse 22, when the time had came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him, talking about Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Simeon took him in his arms. Verse 28, Simeon took him in his arms, praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Verse 33, the child's father and mother, Joseph and Mary, marveled at what was said about him. So I was reading through this and just reading through this life and looking at, at everything, how, how Jesus had came through a virgin and, and had lived and, and everything that was coming up to this point. And I got to verse 33 and I stopped and I looked at that and it was, says, the child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And I'm thinking, what? Like, I don't know how y'all read the Bible, but this is what I read. Like, like they were amazed at what this child was going to do. Like, Mary's a virgin and had, come on, y'all, like, like this happened to them. You realize, like, like, she had Jesus by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph was like, hey, I'm, uh, no, I'm going to put her away. And, and the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, no, you ain't. Said, that child's mine, you're going to hang on to her, and when the time is right, then you can marry her. And they take, this is after Jesus is born, they, they take him to Jerusalem, to the priest, and the priest holds him, and it says that, if you'll read the verses that we didn't go through, it says that uh, the Spirit of the Lord was upon Simeon. And God was talking to him, and he, he takes Jesus, and he's holding him, and he's dedicating him, if you will. And, and he's saying all these amazing things that he's going to do. And Joseph and Mary are standing there going, what? Like he came with a miracle, y'all. Sorry. This just blows my mind. Like, and then I, I stopped, and I got to thinking, how many times do we? Like, like God gave us something to read and follow. And how many times do we read this and we just stand amazed, hoping he does it? Like they stood there after they had a miracle already and were like, what? What? You know that song, Mary, Did You Know? You know what I mean? Like, this is, that's the, I'm going to say they wrote that after this verse. You know what I mean? Like, Mary, did you know? Like, everything Simeon just said was going to happen. And I just stand amazed at Jesus and the fact that he would come for us. Because I know I'm not worthy. But even if, we were the only ones that accepted him. He would have came. He came for you. Just say that. Say, he came for me. Say it again. He came for me. Does that register? Like, he came for me. And I just stand in all kind of like 
Joseph and Mary sometimes like, like you're going to do what? Like, I don't know about y'all, but I read the words sometimes, and I'm like, you're going to do what? Really? And God's just like, just, just watch. Just watch what I'm going to do. Just watch what I got in store for you. Every one of you guys have a purpose. Every one of you guys, God has sent to this earth for a purpose. You are not an accident. You didn't happen by chance. You're here for a purpose. Jesus came with a purpose. Jesus came to fulfill his purpose. He could have done so much more than what he did, but he fulfilled his purpose. So the whole reason that Jesus came was so you could fulfill your purpose. You realize that? Like Christmas time, yes, is about Jesus coming, but he came so you could fulfill a purpose. Come on, there was a plan behind his purpose, and his purpose was your purpose. Oh, y'all didn't understand that. Come on, y'all. His plan and his purpose was your purpose. That thing that he's given you that no one else can do, he came for that. And I just stand sometimes and marvel like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> Me? So we're here tonight just to simply worship him. Thank the Lord for him. Thank him for him. Come on, y'all. <laughs> so I just want to take just a couple of minutes. And I just want to say thank you. This is our last. This dawned on me just today, by the way. And you're going to laugh when I tell you what dawned on me. So this dawned on me today that, that this is our last service of 2021. Like we're not having service Sunday because this is our service that we would normally have on Sunday. We're having it tonight so everybody can chill with their families on the weekend of Christmas, right? So this is our last service of 2021. And I just look at back at 2021 and I just marvel at what God did. And that's what I was doing down there when he said, hey, it's not over. Like, like we're not done yet. We still got another week or more. <laughs> Come on. Like, don't stop believing. Don't start putting your faith in 2022 when this ain't over yet. Start drawing from what you got here. So I just want to take just a second because, you know, what we do here couldn't be done without an entire crew of people. Like for those of you that, are, that maybe haven't been here before, maybe you've only come a couple times, like we're three, and I, we're three years old, a little over three years old. And God has done so much. And I just, first I want to thank the worship team. Come on, y'all give them a hand. Kirk, I don't know if you're watching tonight. I hope you are. I know you're going to see this. We love you. Kirk is at home with family back in Arkansas. Yes. Ah, see. I got y'all to clap for Arkansas. Oh, y'all are clapping for Kirk. Okay. Uh, I thought we were clapping for Arkansas. That's all right. Um, so Kirk is back home um, with his family for Christmas. And we had a stage full of people that stepped up and said, hey, pastor, we, we'll, we got you. Kirk, we got you. Like, we're going to do this. Thank you, guys. Thank every one of you guys for stepping up. You know, we have a lead team here that um, gives countless hours outside of Sunday and everything else they meet. We, we meet during the week, and we plan things, and we go through things. So I just want to thank the lead team for everything you guys have done. You know, we have, uh, besides Farah and myself, we have uh, other pastors, four other, I had to think. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I had to start counting in my head. We've got, we've got four other pastors 
um, that are on staff here and that just absolutely love God and love the people. And I uh, just want to thank them. And I want to thank our board because our board, man, they, y'all don't understand how much the board loves you guys. Like they back us up and, and do the things that we want to do. And they just, they're all in with everything. So I just want to thank the board for them. And I want to thank you guys. Because we could have the board and we could have the lead team and we could have the worship team, but there ain't nobody in the seats, y'all. Come on. Thank you, guys. Thank you for an amazing year. Thank you for believing with us for miracle signs and wonders. Thank you for stepping out in faith and doing what God has called you to do. And we're not done yet, y'all. Come on. I am excited. Like, like there's some things that God's doing that I can't tell you yet that I want to tell you, but I was told I can't tell you yet. But there's things that God's doing, and y'all just keep praying and believing and stretching with us because, man, 2022, come on. Come on. You know, Kate, I said this, I said this last week. Kate, a couple of week ago, weeks ago when she was up here, she actually took my word. That's okay. Um, where's she at tonight? She's here somewhere. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's okay. Um, so, freedom. Freedom in 2022. If you need freedom, God's got it. And we're believing for your freedom in physical, spiritual, mental, whatever area you need freedom in, we're believing for it. Your kids, your aunt, your uncle, your mom, your dad, anybody that needs it, that you're stretching faith, we're stretching with you. And I just want to tell you that we love you guys, and we thank you guys so much. So tonight, we've got a little thing that we're going to do. We've got a little fellowship afterwards. Behind these curtains back here, we're going to open up the curtains. We've got some cookies and cocoa tonight. Come on, y'all. Who doesn't like cookies and cocoa? Yeah, 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 y'all ain't clapping, yeah. That's okay. We'll take pictures of y'all eating it anyway. Um, so we've got some cookies and cocoa back here, uh, homemade cocoa. So, yeah, we didn't, it didn't, like, rip a whole bunch of packages, you know what I mean, and, and dump it out. Like, like it, was, it was made the right way. Homemade cookies. The reason I know that because they were made at my house. I didn't make them. Let me just let you guys know that. I didn't make them. Woo! Yes. I can cook. Don't know if I can bake. So, uh, <laughs> there were several people that made cookies, homemade cookies and stuff, so they're back there. So, you know, my hope is that we just hang around, have some cookies and cocoa, fellowship with each other, meet somebody that you don't know, greet somebody that you don't know, love on somebody that you don't know. I mean, come on, we are loving church, amen? I mean, that's the top of the thing that we do is loving people, amen? Come on, that's the top of who we are. And so if you guys stand with me tonight, I just want to say, from a pastor's heart, I love you. Thank you. Like, when God gave Fair and I the vision for Connect Church, you're the reason. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we stepped out in faith and did everything we did to start this church. Because God loves you that much. He loves you that much. So before we fellowship tonight, would you guys pray with me? Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for an amazing group of people that you have meshed together for such a time as this. I thank you for purpose and planning that you have put in everybody's life. I thank you that we step out from this point forward and fulfill that purpose. And Father, thank you for sending Jesus. 
And Jesus, thank you for accepting this assignment. Thank you for coming. You're amazing. So amazing. Father, we love you, and we're going to honor you through the rest of this year and all of next year. We're going to do better. We're going to be better. We're going to see more. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So, amen. So if you, if I'm just going to say this, I know we didn't take up an offering. If you brought offering to give, there's a red bucket back here. You can give it um, or do it online like you normally do because this is the last time of 2021 we're going to see each other. Um, But hey, love you guys. Let's fellowship and eat some cookies. Amen.